welcome to gear and gear unit design course this is module 5 that is this means that these lectures are for week 5 this is design of general purpose industrial helical gear reduction unit part 3 in last lecture of last week i have already described how the uh, intermediate shaft is developed. So, in this lecture I shall cover development of uh, which is layout of input shaft and integral pinion. And the outline of the lecture is that design problem, gear data, dimensions, first layout recapitulation then development drawing of input pinion integral with shaft that is the main topic bearing dimensions for initial choice of bearing then development of pinion end side shaft and bearing placement then pinion end bearing locking arrangement use of circlip then development of input side shaft and bearing placement and step of input side shaft for oil seal then development of input end of shaft and finally probable bearing locking arrangement with housing we are not developing the housing now but we will think of how it can be locked it is essential and Next uh, load centers of input shafts also will be shown because with this detailed drawing it may uh, slightly change what we already assumed earlier. Now dimension of gear and gear data table that is uh, already we have seen so it is again shown here. Uh, we shall keep in mind that uh, basically when we started uh, this problem uh, then uh, to cover a reduction of about uh, 40 in two stage we um, choose first stage uh, a very low around 3 uh, sorry around uh, 4 point something and second stage a little higher um, that is just to cover in two stage but later uh, for normally for two stage a, a, a reduction ratio of total may be 15 to 30 is very good. Uh, ultimately keeping input shaft and intermediate shaft same we have chosen another ratio for which total ratio comes 24.42 and in the um, Mm, second stage the ratio is 5.125 already we have uh, developed the integral shaft now uh, this is uh, the gear data is still continuing a pitch circle diameters center distance and other uh, dimensions are given here also material is mentioned and then finally we will start drawing now uh, before that uh, the first layout uh, center lines and uh, gears that already we which we have developed that is also shown here say we developed this much earlier and uh, next we are um, developing the input side of the shaft. Now this is the material is shown as well as that what is the dead end num circle that is also shown and uh, it is shown the input uh, portion of the pinion and then there is a step and then uh, the we are we are gradually uh, we shall develop the uh, seat for uh, the bearing this is a, this is the pinion um, end other side will be the input end. Now from the root diameter of the what is the root diameter of the p 
opinion it is given 44.54 input sat. So, therefore, we have taken the sap dimension just ad adjacent to that is slightly less than it is with may be even 44 may be taken, uh, but we have taken uh, here perhaps 43 around 43 and then uh, the here the as you see the corner radius is has been provided and after that uh, we have um, reduced this diameter to 30. This means that we are going to select a ball bearing of uh, 30 millimeter. Here I would like to mention that in intermediate shaft the bearing pair we have taken bearing uh, same bearing for both side which is uh, 6309 means inside diameter 45 millimeter, but uh, there we found that uh, the bearing is uh, have uh, life near the double. Uh, so, here we initially we can make the shaft either 35 or 30, because still we can compromise with uh, 6308 bearing for the intermediate shaft, if necessary we will change later, but here uh, 30 take, uh, Choosing a bearing of 30 inside diameter probably will be ok. And uh, in this stage, I have shown that uh, there is a corner radius which we have taken, then we have kept some um, length, and after that, what we find there is undercut. This undercut, assuming that the diameter for bearing sheet that will be ground. So, this undercut is uh, better to have better grinding up to the last point of bearing sheet and the grinding wheel uh, would not touch the step. Okay. So, this, this is already we have discussed and then this is the developed figure here and next we uh, shall uh, choose the bearing and diameter is already 30 and uh, this diameter is 30 and what we find 6306 bearing can be selected the from the ball bearing groove. Uh, the um, static load capacity is 3200 pound of course, it is given in the pounds. This bearing I have chosen that is SKF bearing and um, dynamic load capacity 4800 in pound. If we divide by 2.2, it will be around 2200 or something like that. That will be Newton 2200 will be the dynamic capacity. And later we will check whether this bearing what we have selected at this stage uh, that is suitable or not. But first of all we have to make the layout so that we can place the bearing and we can find, find the load centers. Now uh, bearing and its locking arrangement. So, bearing selected already we I have shown, but here it is also displayed what is the capacity of the bearing and size and then we place the bearing okay. and that bearing is locked with a circlip and we if we look into the developed figure of that there is the this portion I have shown in the developed form and um, this is the bearing and this is the circlip and uh, oh, one mistake is there in, in the pinion and the intermediate gear there is two center lines, but there will be only one center lines this is um, due to the adjusting the drawing this error is there 
but we consider there is only one central line. Okay, it is just at the end of big arrow here itself. Okay. Now we can proceed to next step. The undercut is uh, shown. I have explained this is undercut. Usually there will be a specific tool which can be used to give such undercut. Depth is around 1.5 millimeter or so, and width is around 2 millimeter. We shall discuss more about this undercut when we will make the detailed drawing of the shaft. Now, next, what to do? We have to now develop the um, other side of the input shaft, other side of the pinion input shafts. Okay. So, next, we consider that as this um, root diameter is 44 point something. So, here also we can take the uh, dimension around 43 and as the shaft where the bearing is sitting diameter is 30. So, we need not put any other spacer or anything the bearing inner rest can directly rest on the shoulder of the step here. It can step. So, directly this is around 43 and here it is around 30. So, this means that we will have 13 millimeter. So, 13 half of that 6.5 millimeter is good enough for taking load through inner rest of the bearing. Now, so again we have the corner radius here as shown this is the corner radius that corner radius is given due to this corner radius and as this uh, diameter is very close you, um, an impression of gear cutting may be uh, evident may be it will be prominent on that corner also, but it does not matter it will make no harm of the shaft. Now, this is the step for bearing and this is the undercut for the bearing other side also and this is again uh, 30 millimeter and the, uh, um, the step up portion is of 43 millimeter dia what al already I have described and this is the bearing what we are using. So, we will now put the bearing, this bearing is now put. After the bearing, what we have done? We have used the circliff for locking, but as well as we have also shown the step for sealing. We have to put a sealing element because the shaft is uh, the input portion of the shaft will. Uh, be out, it will, it, will, it will be exposed to the atmosphere. So, there we must have sealing arrangement, we shall discuss later on this matter, on this issue. Now, this is the developed figure of uh, that portion, what we have developed more clearly here, what we find that uh, this is an undercut is provided for the bearing and as well as there is also the circliff. Okay. Now, next stage we measure that uh, this for step for oil sealing, we are keeping around 12.5 millimeter ab about half an inch and usually this oil sinks or seal of 30 diameter will have an thickness of 8 millimeter or so assuming that and after that there will be space for uh, the cover material we have made it like this and then the shaft diameter is further reduced for input that means a coupling to be fixed there. Usually that portion is kept long uh, perhaps I have not mentioned for anything to be mounted on shaft, what should be the hub length? Usually, hub length 
is 1.5 to 1.8 times, but sometimes it is kept also 2 times and uh, then only single k can be used if it is very less, but in any case it should not be less than one uh, diameter of the sap, um, because then it will be problem in uh, two ways, one that key one single key may not be sufficient and second is that uh, the thickness uh, it, it may be that this whatever would be put on that, that may, uh, may slightly inclined not per, uh, perpendicular to the axis. Uh, however, it is done even it is less than uh, sap diameter if we go for uh, um, the other type of key methods, what is that uh, like gear type coupling um, and other. And here this shaft diameter uh, we must have a key way and this diameter we have taken as already mentioned uh, 25. And here uh, as, as this length has been kept sufficiently long in comparison to uh, the shaft diameter, then probably single key can be used. There are dice key dimensions with standard key dimensions that are available. So, we can use that. Okay. Now, while we are selecting such uh, diameter, we should uh, initially at this stage we can verify whether uh, this is uh, sufficiently strong. Uh, uh, just if you look into this, the torque is torque input is will really there and there will be coupling. Coupling means there will be no axial load normally there will be no axial load and later of course, we can change the design in such a way that which can take also a little bit axial load or this sap diameter what we have already taken that may take the axial load also. Okay. But uh, first we can check with this what will be the um, shear stress at the considered um, torque. Now, considering into input torque is twice the nominal torque what we have already considered for gear design, the nominal maximum shear stress can be derived using this formula tau is equal to shear stress tau is equal to 16 times torque divided by pi into diameter to the power cube. At input end is it is all we have calculated it is 19.6 mega Pascal, which is very low and therefore, the shaft input diameter is acceptable. Uh, here it can be we can conclude that we do not have to change this uh, shaft diameter even if there is some axial load is coming later we, we will check that. Now, input shaft material as already told it is EN 19 and uh, uh, sorry, there is a mistake so that it will not be C 40, C 45, it is not the equivalent, it is something else. So, so this is a mistake, obvious mistake, and uh, here it will be it is. Um, um, as far as I remember uh, 40 C R 1 M O 2 that is 40 means carbon percentage will be 0.4 percent and uh, we can of course, write here this will be uh, apparently 40 C R M O 2 that is um, uh, chromium will be 1 percent, molybdenum will be 2 percent. Anyway, this can be confirmed later with the assignment, this will be and uh, the note it will be corrected. However, it is having ultimate strength 570 mega Pascal and um, the yield strength is 600 mega Pascal and what the uh, shear stress we found this very very less in comparison to that. So, 
So, this is again the developed portion is shown here you can see this how this hard clip is put to the lock that uh, that one and this is for the sealing portion and this is for the input coupling input coupling this portion from this portion to this portion uh, may be a, a little portion of this if we consider the housing housing cover will go through here something like this so this is outside the housing okay so this is the input side now <coughs> after that so all uh, the full set input set is already developed and then we will look into that this is this is called sub assembly of input set whereas this is the sub assembly of the output set so locking with housing now we will think of the locking with housing now here as you see as already described we can uh, use a circlip for locking the inner end of the bearing if we uh, why we are trying to lock this this end bearing because as the pinion is close to other end bearing that will have the maximum load radial loads here the radial loads will be less so what we can do we can lock this bearing fully so that it can take the axial load irrespective of the direction of rotations so that we are doing on the other hand this bearing will uh, remain free and if there is any expansion of contraction of the shaft that will be that the, the other end bearing will shift axially a little bit and that is allowed now this locking with the housing it can be made like this that for this side bearing for this side bearing the housing uh, bore is made straight and we use a circlip there we use a circlip there and other side the bearing cover which is something like this along with this small portion that will come there and uh, that is fixed by the bolt. So, the bearing cannot move axially neither on the shaft nor on the housing if necessary there is seam is used to adjust the space cover with housing and the bearing end. Okay. So, that we will again discuss when we will make the detailed drawing. So, we have used a circle here, however, it this is the end cover already discussed, however, it also can be locked like this while, while we are boring instead of making this circle groove rather we keep some material. So, that bearing outer rest can rest on that and then uh, cover from the other sides. So, it is end cover that is shown here and this is we are that input shaft we have shown. So, if we consider that as the gearbox, then we have completed that uh, first layout of the input shaft and uh, intermediate shaft is already um, completed. So, now we can go for the other shaft, but before that let us say this is the sub assembly of input shaft and if we look into the distance between the two bearings that is 
No, this is total length of the uh, around 276 or 275 millimeter. We can while we make the detail drawing, we can uh, even uh, adjust a little bit here, and then we find that the bearing distance, the support point of the bearings, the midpoint in this case, as it is a deep groove ball bearing, which is 186 millimeter, and the center of this the pinion is from is uh, 56 from the mid of the nearest bearing. So, these dimensions will be required while we calculate the load on this axis these two dimension 186 and 56 and now we can proceed for calculating that what load coming on on the these two bearings and then we can finalize uh, the shafted design we can verify the diameter already we have chosen that will be satisfactory or not so these again i have given the bearing dimensions which are the which we have used and also here i have shown the gear data so, if we have these informations, this drawing and other, and as we know that how much torque it is transmitting from there, we can calculate how much load will come on pinion and how it will be distributed on two bearings, and then we will find the bearing life and as well as we will verify the shaft design. Of course, after that, we need to also check that uh, the key what we have selected, whether that is. Uh, satisfactory or not. So, thank you. We have completed the layout of the input shaft.